Hi, I'm Mike, and this is Little Orphan Andy getting himself some breakfast. Today we tackle the project list once again as we perform some pasture maintenance and reseed our feedlots on our Wyoming life. <laughs> Welcome to our Wyoming life. Each week we invite you to come along with us as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Please subscribe and join us as we ranch, market garden, and get into, well, a little bit of everything in between. Behind me, as always, this is the project list, a list of things that need done around the ranch. Each week we get to tackle something off the board and I get to take you along with me. I've been asked how we decide what and when to do each individual project. And the answer is both, well, it's hard and easy to answer at the same time. Some projects we can just get after, but others are time dependent or even weather dependent and need to be done in a time frame that is dictated by mother nature. For example, cleaning the barn or shop can be done anytime, rain or shine. And since we're mostly inside, Projects like those are easy to work on when you're limited on what else you can do, which is why usually projects like cleaning the shop sometimes get pushed back on the list. There are also those projects that become emergencies like setting a new stock tank because a well is down and you have to haul water to the cows. Then there are the projects that we have a small window to get done, like today's project. We have today to get it done. Rain and snow is on the way, and we're gonna use that to our advantage as we get started reseeding some pasture. This pasture we call the triangle pasture, and right beside it is a smaller pasture we call the lot. The triangle pasture is about 19 acres, and the lot is another three, giving us 22 acres to reseed today. The total width of our work area is a third of a mile, and it's a quarter of a mile long, almost a million square feet. Just to put that in perspective, a football field is about 1.3 acres, so we have about 17 football fields to work on today. We have a bit of a time crunch going on because weather is moving in, and the whole point of getting this done today is so the seed is out there and can take advantage of the moisture from this storm to help with germination. As with any project, we have some prep work to do first, and after feeding Little Orphan Andy, we can head out and get the cows fed but we're gonna feed them away from the pastures we're gonna receive today because from here on out, they're not gonna be allowed in there ever again. Well, at least this year. Once we have our seed out, it needs to be left alone and the cows won't be back into this area until fall. Don't worry about them though. They have plenty more room to roam. I don't know about you, but sometimes it seems like someone is working against you when it comes time to get something done. For me, that force working against me is usually myself. We are gonna be reseeding the pasture using a small broadcast seeder that attaches on the back of the four-wheeler, this four-wheeler, which is buried in the barn. We haven't used it all winter long, and over the winter, we've been blocking it in. Aaron's new high tunnel parts are all in the way. Gilbert's old gator is in here along with another four-wheeler, and let's not forget the tractor. Before we can get started, we need to move some things around. Seems like the old barn shuffle is a game that we play here quite often, moving one thing or four things to get something you need. We have limited space to store equipment in the wintertime and things tend to get crammed into tight spots, putting stuff in every little nook and cranny and come spring, there's always something in the way. First, we move the tractor and with it out of the way, we can get one four wheeler out. then Gilbert's little gator can be pulled out and parked out of the way as well. Now we have access to the four wheeler we need. And after some more of the old barn shuffle, I can work it out of its parking spot. shop where we will start attaching and filling our cedar. 
First though, we need our seed. This is a pasture mix, a mixture of a number of wheat grasses that do well in our area and a bit of alfalfa thrown in. The seed we get is all tested for germination rates and this stuff rates at an average of about 93%. That's in perfect conditions, but of course we can always hope for the best. While we're in the barn, we're also gonna grab our seeder, which will be attached to the four-wheeler and spread seed out over the field. We'll take it all over to the shop and attach it to the back of the ATV. This type of seeding is about as easy and as cheap as it gets. I've mentioned it before, but when it comes to working with yourself, sometimes you have to invent a second set of hands. And this broom will work well to hold the seeder in place while I go ahead and attach the U-bolts that hold it on this four-wheeler. Once it's all attached, we can test the spreader out and let's talk about how it works. The seed will be added into the bin. Then we have this controller on the four-wheeler which controls the spreader. The higher the speed, the more it spins and the farther it flings the seed. Also on the seeder is a flow control rate which will control how fast the seed flows from the bin into the spinning wheel. There's also a handy chart on the seeder, which is supposed to help you figure out the settings, but I've found that a lot of times they don't take pasture grasses into consideration on these small machines. They're made more for lawn grass seeds, so we're gonna have to experiment and get our flow rate correct. We're aiming to put down about five to 10 pounds of seed per acre. First, we need to know how many pounds of seed the seeder will hold. So we get a scale and we weigh it out. As it turns out, it'll hold 25 pounds. So we can figure on starting with the small lot, which is three acres, and we should use about 25 pounds in that area. Once we're in the field, we can fire it up and get going, adjusting our speed of travel and the rate of flow as we go, hopefully getting to that sweet spot where spreading the seed is gonna do the most good. Like I said, overseeding or broadcast seeding is the cheapest and easiest way for us to reseed a pasture. We don't own a drill or a seeder that would put the grass into the ground. And really all we need for germination of this seed is some sort of soil contact, which really isn't gonna be a problem out here. We previously harrowed this ground to knock down a number of cow pies and loosen the soil to prepare it for overseeding. Now, all we have to do is spread the seed as evenly as possible and hope for some moisture to get these little plants started. As the seeder spins, it throws seed out about 20 feet on either side of the four-wheeler. With this little seeder, it can be a slow process. Every three acres or so, we're gonna have to go back to the shop and refill our seeder. We're doing it in the shop to keep the bit of wind from blowing the seed around. The areas we are reseeding today are utilized by cows during the winter. We feed here and the soil gets pretty hammered by hooves and tractors. By reseeding now, we're ensuring a better pasture for this fall improved nutrition for the cows when they return from summer pasture, and better soil health. The cows won't thank us, but I'll feel a whole lot better getting it done. As I said earlier, weather is moving in. We have rain starting just as we're finishing up, and soon it'll change to snow. We're expecting three inches of snow tonight, which will give this seed a great kickstart, using the weather and timing to our advantage. Using the weather around here to your advantage is sometimes easier said than done, especially when it can change just like that. Thanks for coming out today for a project list that although super simple can pay off huge in the end, improving soil health and setting us up for a beautiful pasture later on this spring and summer. It's live stream week and we invite you to join us Thursday for another ranch talk with Aaron and me. We have a couple of cool announcements to make and share with you. And of course, we'll be taking your questions and giving you all the answers. That's Thursday at 7 p.m. Mountain Time and we hope to see you there. There's oh, they're always a lot of fun. Please subscribe and join us and you can make sure you hit that bell so you get the notification so you don't miss a thing from the ranch. Calving continues and this weekend we'll have a huge calving update coming. Until I see you again, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.